Hello, everybody. Once again, welcome back to Bobcat Corner. This is episode number 10 of Bobcat Corner. Um, this is Stephen Vitt once again reporting. And I'm going to direct your attention for this episode to a couple articles that were posted um, earlier this week uh, towards the end of April, which I will uh, share with you guys uh, afterwards. Um, and I'm going to go through both these articles briefly as as some sort of a rundown of both of them i'm not going to read all not going to read every single word from both articles but i'm just going to give you guys the gist of what's going on in college football right now as you guys are probably aware of there are many moving parts um, in college football right now uh, there there is a lot of movement going on a lot of conference realignment going on and that never stops at this point it doesn't seem to anyway but anyway let's just get to it the title of this episode is college football playoff or g5 only playoff now you notice the two differences here college football playoff g5 only playoff and if you guys carefully read both these articles, it's going to come into clear focus what's going on here. Now, the first article, let's briefly review the first article here. It was posted by Ross Stellinger on Yahoo Sports. His article came out on April 22nd. And it was basically, that article was basically a review, a review about all the talks and all the negotiations that revolved around the college football playoff uh, structure, the format, the revenue di distribution model, everything surrounding that. And that there are like multiple years of talks going on about how to construct this thing, how to expand it from four teams to 12 teams or so on. And and it was just a recap of the timeline. And something I noticed was that in January of 2022, there was like, I guess you can call it arguing over the CFP formats and that there is this alliance, so-called, being, being formed between the Big Ten, the ACC, and the Pac-12. Now... Fast forward to today in 2024, we know what's going on in college football where the Big Ten obviously has a lot of power. The ACC is in a world of hurt right now, legally speaking, and the Pac-12 is pretty much ancient history, and it's going to be ancient history officially soon. So, so much for that alliance, huh? But anyway... You know, and it just goes on, the article by Ross Dellinger just goes on to say about, you know, the 58% combined of the rev revenue distribution model, the pie, that's just going to be given to the SEC and the Big Ten. They're going to benefit the most out of anybody else, uh, economically speaking. And then there comes a point in uh, this Yahoo Sports article where MAC Commissioner John Steinbrecher, uh, one conference commissioner who I don't hear a lot from, and there's a good reason for that, but um, it's just a matter of, you know, this commissioner, he just doesn't say a lot. And, and just take that for what it is, but he has been quoted, John Steinbrecher, he has been quoted in this article, if I can pull it up real fast. And let me see if I can find it. Because I do think, right here, I'm going to read this quote real fast. Let's see, everything's good. Okay, here's the quote. Our inability to conclude a deal two plus years ago had a pretty significant impact on where the financials ended up, said Mac Commissioner John Steinbrecher, a leading voice in college sports who often chairs the CFP commissioner meetings. Now, he was commenting on what happened in 2022. 
again with the quote, what was on the table in 2022 was simply different. The delay opened the door for continuing changes to where we ended up. And what he means by delay, he means that there again, the arguing, all the constant back and forth about, oh, we should get this much money for the revenue distribution. Oh, we should get this much money, you know, back and forth, blah, blah, blah. That's part, definitely part of what John Steinbrecher was uh, referring to. So, you know, the G5 conferences with the Mac being one of them. Yeah, you know, the Mac, the Sun Belt, Conference USA, Mountain West, and the American Athletic Conference. The G5, they were getting 1.2 million to 1.5 million annually distributed between all those schools. And now with this newly agreed upon revenue distribution model, that's going to be in effect from 20 going forward from 2026 to 2031 is that, you know, they're going to be receiving just like, you know, worst case scenario, $300,000 bump up to like as much as $1.8 million annually, which isn't much, you know, let's be honest. I mean, they didn't lose money, but they didn't gain that much either. So another interesting point there. And also it, this article article by Ross Dellinger just goes on to state about how much, you know, Greg Sankey and Tony Petiti are just like, you know, gloating and saying this or that and just saying, oh, we did what we could. And, you know, we had other conference commissioners on the phone and they weren't willing to deal with us because, you know, they didn't agree with us, blah, blah, blah. There's a whole lot of that in, in this Yahoo Sports article, which is typical, especially in the case of Greg Sankey. And I don't mean, I don't mean to put down the comments that Greg Sankey or Tony Petiti make. It's just that it gets to be pretty hypocritical when they continuously, you know, put out sound bites to make themselves, you know, to make themselves sound good and look good, but when you read the fine print, you you know that you know these guys are the bullies in that room, in that negotiating room, and it's not a secret anymore at this point. If you read the fine print, so when you guys have a time, read that Yahoo Sports article by Ross Dellinger, which came out on the twenty second. Now switching gears to the second article, second of two that I'm going to just briefly uh, review here. And this was published the very next day on April 23rd. Uh, this article was posted by The Athletic, which dove into the G5 side of things and mainly talking about a postseason format that involves only the G5 uh, conferences, at least for now. And I have to preface that by saying, at least for now, because there have been talks more recently that in the long-term future, it may not just involve G5 conferences, but that will be for another time. But anyway, this article by The Athletic, this should get even more of your attention, especially if you closely follow a G5 conference and a G5 conference school at that. Um, Going through the bits and pieces of this article, uh, it basically lays out the groundwork for the fact that uh, G5 conference administrators, you know, commissioners and other leaders, uh, they've been in constant talks, however, however, you know, minimal they've been, but it's been constant that they've been talking about having some sort of G5 only playoff set in place at some point in the future. But I do have to say this before we uh, go on, and it says it in the article here in it, by The Athletic that nothing is imminent. Okay, this is not set in stone. This is not a guarantee. These are just talks. These are just discussions by G5 administrators that saying, yeah, we'd like to have a G5 only uh, playoff uh, to get going here in the event that the big boys, the Big Ten and the SEC push us out of the college football playoff. That is basically what they're saying without coming out and saying it. 
Um, we like to have a G5 only playoff, but we have to cross our T's and dot our I's, so to speak, first before we get to that point. That's the meat and potatoes of this uh, athletic article. And interesting parts that you got to consider in this article when you read it, guys, is that former college and NFL football coach Derek Dooley, he's been the main salesman going door to door, so to speak, about trying to pitch this idea, trying to get a foundation started via private equity. And that's going to be a term that I won't be surprised if I have to use going forward, private equity. That's Those two words alone have been popping up a lot lately in certain other circles, such as, you know, the Dartmouth case with, you know, should student athletes be paid as employees and stuff like that. That will be for another topic that I'll hopefully covers soon. But yeah, private equity and the firms that, you know, that fund these things, you know, Derek Dooley, you know, he's just really spearheading this. You know, he's, go- he's going door to door, so to speak. He's contacting all these G5 conference schools, asking them, okay, are you guys interested in doing stuff like this? What would it take to get something like this going for a G5 only playoff? And honestly, it's just something that should be done. It's something that should have been talked about, you know, many years ago. And apparently these talks got started way back in 2021. When you read this article. It will say it right there. <clears throat> and that, you know, that was also at a time when uh, leadership was discussing, oh, maybe we should, you know, merge uh, the AAC, the Sun Belt, and Conference USA together, reorganize all that regionally so that those conferences in particular were would be more happy with where they stand. And you know, just weeks later after those initial talks, <clears throat> the um, the AAC went ahead and just added, you know, six, you know, now former Conference USA schools to their conference. So you can tell that conference realignment, it doesn't just affect, you know, power conferences. It affects the little guys too. It affects the G5 conferences as well. And I want to read this quote that I've written down here because I've read the article myself. Um, <clears throat> this is from an anonymous G5 uh, school athletic director. This is what he had to say concerning this topic of a G5 only playoff. And it goes something like this. Taking some leadership here to control our own destiny so that Tony Petiti and Greg Sankey don't make that decision for us. The athletic director, he just lays it out there for you guys. That is basically a too long, don't didn't read uh, version of what to expect in this article. And this is what I personally, Stephen Vitt, I personally have suspected all along ever since this conference realignment stuff has been going on is that I would not be surprised, and this is me talking right now, I would not be surprised if the Big Ten and the SEC push their weight around, if they push their weight around so much that they end up pushing out all G5 conferences from the college football playoff table altogether. I believe it's inevitable. I believe it's going to happen one way or the other. How exactly it's going to happen, I don't know. But I believe it's only a matter of when that they do it. It's not if. And guys, I just think you guys need to start wrapping your heads around that. That inevitability that the Big Ten and the SEC are going to do it. They're going to do whatever they want to do. And if that means getting rid of the G5 conferences from their college football playoff paradise, so to speak, they're going to do it. Because they feel like they have the power to do it. Just listen to what Greg Sankey says. Just listen to what Tony Petiti says. They spell it out for you in these uh, sound bites of theirs. So, yeah, basically speaking, a G5 only playoff, you know, that format, you know, a tournament, 
it's long overdue. I think the longer we go ahead with this, the longer we go into this college football playoff thing with 12 teams and 14 teams, and you can keep expanding it however you want, 16 teams or however many, you notice the recurring trend that G5 representation stays the same. There's only one seat at the table for the college football playoff for G5 schools. In long-term, big picture, guys, this is not going to end well for the G5. It just won't. Long-term, big picture, all G5 conference commissioners and leaders and school presidents, they have to come to this realization that the big boys don't want them at their table. Period. End of discussion. So my opinion is, why wouldn't you want to get started with the G5 only playoff idea of like eight teams, you know, eight teams, you take all five G5 conference champions, they automatically get in, and then you get the next three best teams in there. Five plus three equals eight. There you go. It really is not that hard to picture in the grand scheme of things. And for those of you wondering, oh, there's not going to be any money behind it. Well, this is why we're having stuff like, you know, private equity being thrown in. This is why we're having people like Derek Dooley, uh, you know, come on stage and, and pitch this, you know, because yeah, you're not going to get ESPN levels of money, but so what? That should not be the point. The point is, is there money to be had in a G5 only playoff? Yes, there is. I believe so. Yes, there is. And whether you got to get through CBS, NBC, or any other way, any other network to do this, then so be it. Guys, I just think we're long overdue to get this. I think we need to start discussing this openly about G5 only playoffs. I believe it's the only way to go ultimately for these schools because they can't get the help from the Big Ten or the SEC. They're not going to get that help. And who knows and who cares what the Big 12 or the ACC are going to do because they're on their own island trying to deal with all this too. So, yeah, <clears throat> I say let's have it. Let's have a G5 only playoff. I believe that there, there can be money to be had here. And I do believe that it will get support. I'll be surprised if it doesn't. You have to dig deep. You have to look deep into your connections and resources if you're running college football. And you'll see that, yeah, there are some resources to use. There are some partners, media partners, economic partners to contact to get funding for this. That's all there is to it. So this is just something to keep an eye on, guys, because you're going to get a lot more talk about this as the years go on especially if the Big Ten and the SEC continue to not be so nice towards the G5. You are going to get more stories about this, whether or not you guys like it. So, you know, we have to come to this realization that, yeah, G5 only playoffs, it is the way to go somehow, some way. But yeah, anyway, I just wanted to report about that. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comment section. I really want to get comments about this topic in particular because college football playoff, postseason formats, it's really, you know, it gets, you know, the conversations get kind of heated sometimes when it comes to, you know, postseason formats and stuff like that. So let me know what you guys think. Hope you guys are having a good day today and uh, I'll see you guys once again soon. Take care.